So, um, friend of the show, Lori Penny, has a piece up at The Guardian um, called, If You're a Feminist, uh, You'll Be Called... Uh, the headline is, If You're a Feminist, You'll Be Called a Man-Hater, You Don't Need Rebranding. Um, and uh, it... So, so, what started all this, like, rebranding thing, or, I mean... It's been going, as Lori points out, it's nothing new. It's been going on for, you know, a long, long time. But um, there was uh, Elle magazine did this, uh, this like, spread about rebranding feminism. And there was the image going around on Twitter um, that now I, I should have brought it up. But it was, like, this contest that offered, like, $2,000 to, like, somebody who wanted to, like, design a fun image to rebrand feminism. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, and now I don't. I should have brought it up because it was, like, I don't remember exactly, like, who was behind it. Um, it. But it was this, yeah, this contest called Rebranding Feminism. And it had uh. this picture of, like, a, you know, thin, gorgeous white woman, like, wearing, like, a suit. <laughs> um, but like a like a you know a suit that looked very good on her, um, and she was like you know sniffing. Brandy. Not like a queer gender bendy like fun like. I mean, suit. It, it, like I was actually I spent a lot of time trying to think about the role of the suit in this image. Uh, it's queer and gender bendy in the way that like I want a suit that fits me like that and looks good. Uh, um, like it's a men. I think it's supposed to suggest like a men's suit. It's not like a, it doesn't have like ruffles on it or anything. Okay. You know, but. It like it also like looks great on her, and it looks like it's like a ten thousand dollars suit. Oh, so okay. like it's, it's difficult. To, like I was like, is this is the suit supposed to function as like a symbol of like manness, or is it supposed to function as like a symbol of like sexy, w- powerful womanness? Mm-hmm. It's it's it, and either way, the answer either way, it's bad. I think. Okay, yeah. um, but uh, but that said, I would like a suit that fits me that, that well, and and looks looks i mean it looks cool like the whole thing that advertising does is it makes things look cool but it's like this skinny blonde woman in like a very expensive suit um you know maybe that's it's basically like i feel like the suit is functioning as a like she's not in like a betty draper dress she's in like a don draper suit but it it looks sexy on her okay you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. if you were rebranding feminism and you had a woman wearing like a I mean, I guess she could be wearing, like, a smart, like, you know, professional-looking dress. But I feel like the suit is functioning as a symbol of, like, man, power, Uh but still sexy. Right. You know? Um, Whereas, like, a dress is, like, a symbol of, like, woman not having power. Um, But, and, you know, a lot of people on Twitter were like, for fuck's sake, feminism isn't a brand. You can't rebrand something that's not a brand. Um, And... So Lori kind of explores this question of, you know, feminism and the whole kind of uh, thinking behind that spread that I just described is like, feminism is alienating to the young women. We got to do something to make it cooler, sexier. Who's going to do it? All of the tone scolds. Yeah, exactly. And there are so many tone scolds out there. So many brand, brand managers and tone scolds. <laughs> and bacon bros. And bacon bros. Um, and it's usually the bacon bros. Or not usually. It, it the overlap between bacon bros and people who scold feminism for their tone, probably more than zero. Yeah. Um, almost certainly. Uh, but, and this is something that I have thought about a lot, especially when I was of the when I was a feminist who was of the thinking that like, we, you know, this should be bring more people in, like more boys should be feminists and more girls should be feminists and, uh, people should be less, uh, scared by this. And I spent so much time and energy talking to people who were like, Oh, feminism, hairy armpits. (laughs) And then being like, actually, it's not like that, which is, you know, but, uh, and so I spent a lot of time thinking like, well, should you know is not not like blaming feminism not like is this feminism's problem but like is this word so loaded Mm -hmm. that uh it's gonna that it's functioning as you know as uh something that's exclusive rather than inclusive does it just shut everything down right off the bat right um and uh, Lori's argument in her piece which is really really interesting and i uh, think absolutely right and even though i've definitely uh, it, it was interesting for me to read because I was definitely uh, not always of this way of thinking. 
even though like it's one of those things that when you read it you're like oh of course of course that's right but that you know oh feminism is like alienating and uh you know it leads to a lot of like ridicule of course because anything that's powerful anything that's meaningful will of course not be like universally embraced and celebrated something that is universally embraced and celebrating probably not super threatening right the fact that it's actually reviled by so many people is a sign of its strength rather than a weakness right and the fact that it's yeah that it is uh has this kind of like makes um you know makes people want to dismiss you and not want to talk to you like that's a that that's a function of the fact that it has power so if it were to become this big thing where like everybody's into it or you know more people are into it and uh you know everyone's just enthusiastically like yeah feminism you know that we we have seen that with certain maybe not the word feminism the word feminism is still um i think in in, the, in mainstream culture for the most part pretty uh like loaded and and alienating but like you know the things that I'm thinking back to a lot of bell hooks now, like the things that aren't ultimately super threatening to patriarchy, to capitalism, especially to capitalism, um, are the things that then get kind of swept up and become, you know, quite popular. Like no, no one has a problem now against like, you know, um, women in the workplace. Still, it's not equal. Still that their struggles still, you know, there needs to be more women, uh, all of that stuff. But you know, it's, it's, you know, it's you'll, you'll find somebody who might be like feminism stupid, but who will still be like, oh, well, of course, women should have the right to work. Yeah. Well, and, and sort of similarly, um, but in a different topic, like it's fine for uh, for like Gap or whatever to have to to have charities that like give uh, things to Africa or like for Bono to to like work to solve world hunger or whatever. But you can't actually talk about u.s imperialism about uh about how uh, imf and world bank loans are predatory and suck the resources and wealth from countries and and so you can you can have you can have uh solutions that that are very incredibly popular and make everyone feel great and you can have all sorts of fancy charity balls where celebrities get together and they say we're donating 10 million dollars to africa uh-huh. and maybe those 10 million dollars even will do some good but you can't actually have a conversation about uh, about the underlying um, structures and, and institutions that uh, that maintain um, global inequality, that maintain global poverty, et cetera, et cetera. Right, and so and and similarly, yeah, there's certain ideas that uh, are, you know are still important and and you know uh, were powerful that the, but the the ones that have gotten kind of like swept up and normalized and okay are like. You know, sure, women can wear pants, but you still got to look sexy in them. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> or like, sure, women can work, but you better be wearing a sexy pants suit and you better not be, you know, taking a man's job. Uh, or, you know, sure, women can work, but we're sure as hell not going to talk about, like, you know, women of color who uh, are, you know, economically and like structurally, uh, you know, blocked out of uh those positions because of the intersections of white supremacy and capitalism and patriarchy but like uh you know so so even though like and this is like as a feminist who spent a lot of time trying to be like it's not scary it's okay um these are the things that a lot of people will point to they'll be like well i'm I, you know, I don't think feminism is necessary anymore because everything's fine now. Like, I can work, I can date whoever uh-huh. I want, I can, you know, sleep around, whatever. Um, but when it's, when it comes to actually, you know, still pointing out the way the patriarchy still functions, whether it be, you know, men in power or, uh, you know, sexual politics or, um, you know, uh, racist economic politics, racist and sexist economic, uh, you know, policies or whatever. If, if you go as, if you dare to like, you know, still remain in that area of like that types of criticism, then it's just, oh, well, you're, 
you're crazy, you're bitter, you're a crazy feminist. That's what's wrong with feminism, you know, like, as opposed to just being like a, you know, you can be like a woman who is like empowered now. Um, and that's not necessarily a, threatening but if you're a woman who's empowered who's like pointing out the way that power is still functioning uh and keeping other people down and other women down um especially if you're doing it in like an intersectional way that like really brings in like a lot of uh you know brings in an intersectional analysis rather than just being like more women should have expensive white collar jobs yeah um then you know that's like the line that you cross and then suddenly you're you you know that that's when all of those same old like negative feminist w- ways to dismiss feminists come back. So you know I think it's Lori's argument is like it's a uh, you know it's it's if if you are receiving that kind of hatred that kind of um, you know reaction it's because um, what you're saying is remains you know something that isn't super palatable and and uncontroversial. Um, meaning that, you know, it's important because if everything is just, you know, uncritically, whatever is being completely uncritically embraced and made popular might is, is necessarily not the thing that is going to be disruptive to the way things are. Well, so uh, I feel like that's um, that's a good time for me to uh, to drop a, a serious truth bomb on you and say, I don't think we need the word feminism anymore. I think that we should just use the word humanism and uh. and equalism because at the end of the day aren't we all equals humans <laughs> and uh I don't n- neither to me neither mm-hmm. of those uh-huh. words uh has the negative connotations of feminism mm-hmm. so why can't we just use those words Right well first of all as listeners have pointed out humanism is an actual like school of thought that's that's not what anti-feminists mean when they think when they say what they think it means. Like you, but, but why can't we get rid of that other school of humanist thought and use what I mean humanist thought? Okay, so forget humanism. Like humanism actually means something, but the way it's used is just when a guy doesn't like the word feminism, and they'll be like, "Well, I want everybody to be equal, but I'm just I, humans. It doesn't. It's not about women. Humanism." Not realizing that humanism is actually a thing that already exists. And you can't just be like, I'm into humans. I call it humanism. It's a fun thing I do. I, want I love feminism. bacon, too. Yeah. I don't like it when women talk about women and their feminism. But I like humans, so I call it humanism. Nom, 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 bacon. So how about equalism, then? Because that that has uh, all of the comforting uh, inclusiveness of equality and uh you know isn't it better to bring everyone to the giant table and then and talk and and start let's start fresh with a new movement called equalism (laughs) equalism i i don't know if i've heard this one before i will refer to i think lori mentions it in in her piece doesn't she? really i think so yeah uh, uh i don't i i if if she did i missed it um i mean I'm going to refer to Lindy West uh, and her, uh, I think it was like fleeches and flooches analogy uh-huh. that in the Dr. Seuss <laughs> yeah. world where there is, for the most part, uh, there, there's two you know defined genders, even if there's um, those genders are constructions, which I believe, uh, let's imagine that the, the two kind of genders as most people see them are fleeches and flooches uh and uh fleeches you know own um historically you know they they uh have always been the president um they own all of the property for a long time fluches weren't even allowed to own property um they you know they run all of the uh kind of municipal and governmental structures um and then uh the flute and they 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 run the newspaper you know they write everything they run television they run, make the movies all this stuff and then the fluches one day were like hey this isn't this isn't fair we want equal rights um they they could just start a movement called you know beastism because they're they're all beasts um uh-huh. Fluches and fluches, all beasts. But if they start the movement called fluchism, it specifically recognizes how it's the ways that fluches have been left out of the beast structure. So it's not about, it is about all beasts, but the fleeches are, are doing fine, broadly speaking. Certainly there's individual fleeches and, 
you know, fleeches that suffer from other uh uh, oppressive forces but like in terms of like who has the power it's the fleeches and so in order to like recognize that structurally the fleeches put fleechism in their name lindy west always makes things make sense <laughs> she does